Today I've got a Mitsubishi DLP TV here and it's the standard white dot problem. Very hard to see which is snow on the screen but I'll bring up the menu here. You can definitely see some specs on the screen. You can bring up a test pattern to more accurately uh, find the defect uh, with the Mitsubishi remote hit menu and then two four five seven it's going to bring up your setting adjustments there on some models you have to press play first this is one of them you press play and then the fast forward and rewind buttons allow you to step through the various menus you can see the spots there in the middle usually you just get white spots sometimes you get black and white spots you can see this one has both I've zoomed up very close on it here so there's the the black dots and then I'll step it over to a screen that has just little white spots. There they are. So let's uh, go ahead and talk about replacing the DLP chip. Quite easy to do on this one. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is take the back off. All right, now that we've got the back off, I'm going to look for three screws. There's one way over here in the corner. There's another one right underneath the power connector. And then there's another one underneath the fan. You're going to remove those three screws. Okay, and now on some of these models, it, it's a little bit different. This one, uh, you have to remove the power connector as well as the ballast cable from the ballast itself. They both have little snap locks you have to unplug. Disconnect one cable from the door safety switch. Unplug the DMD power connector. All these cables can be swung out of the way. Remove two screws that hold in the DVI cable to the DMD board. Once all that's been done, the whole engine just completely comes out of the set and can be set aside. So I've got the engine out of the set and one of the first things I always look at is the amount of dust that's accumulated. You can see the fan has got quite a bit of dust on it. Take a look at the bottom. There's a Scirocco fan down here as well as the lamp fan. I'm going to take and blow those out with my uh, shop vac right now. Okay, so the next thing I've got it out, it's all clean now. Let's go ahead and remove these two screws over the lens cover. Now unfortunately, when they manufacture these sets, they use this stick-on foam tape all around the lens, and the only way to really get it off is you just got to kind of tear it in a couple spots. It goes back on pretty nicely afterwards. Sometimes underneath, you'll find that there's a cable. This one's held on with tape and it's already let go. Uh, you will need to disconnect that cable anyhow. Uh, from the back of this unit, you're going to want to find these two connectors right here. These are the color wheel index and the color wheel motor. The index has a locking tab. You have to press the tab to release it. The motor just pulls straight out. That's from the back of the DMD board. Now from the front of the DMD board. You're going to want to remove all the fans. Don't worry, they can't be plugged in incorrectly, so you don't have to worry about that. Remove the temperature sensor lead. You're going to want to take out these two nuts on the DVI connector. It's a five millimeter nut. And the next thing is just remove all the screws that are around the extremity of the DMD board. All right, I got all the screws out of the DMD case. The cover just lifts completely off of it. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take the heat sink loose from the DMD board. One thing I like to do to try to save the, the little uh, heat sink 
It's a piece of conductive, heat conductive tape. Is I'll apply pressure right in the center. I'm gonna loosen the two screws kind of evenly if I can. They're kind of hard to do sometimes. While applying pressure in the in the center still, I'm gonna rotate it very slightly side to side. And if you do that, usually you can get this off with the conductive tape still on there and you won't have to reuse. If you order your DLP chip from Mitsubishi, they'll send you a new one. But if you order it from anybody else, you won't get a new piece of uh, heat tape with it. So by keeping constant pressure on the center of this heat sink, removing both screw screws, it causes it not to want to pull one side or the other. And then by rotating it, it actually breaks the, the tape free from the back of the DLP chip, which is right here. This is the DLP chip. Next, we're gonna take out these five screws. Also be very careful. It's hard to see on the camera, but there's a little, uh, a, another piece of the heat tape right here. And what this is, it's an IC chip that determines the temperature of the heat sink. And so you don't want to lose that piece of tape, otherwise the set has no way of knowing what the temperature of the DLP chip heat sink is. And what this does is it talks to the microprocessor and it controls the fan speed. So if it's a hot day or this has become plugged with dust, it'll uh, kick up the fan quite a bit to help cool this chip. All right, I've got the screws out of the DLP or the DMD board, and now it's just a matter of very carefully you pull the board straight back. It comes right out. There's the DLP chip that has the problem. Now to remove the chip on this one, it has a zero insertion force socket. It has a little screw head on the end of it. All you need to do is rotate that 180 degrees and it releases the socket and the chip will actually just fall in and out of the socket with no force whatsoever. If you were to try to release it while it's locked, well then you can lift up the whole board by the chip. So just make sure that you rotate that 180 degrees before you try to take the chip out or put it in. I've had people try to replace these chips themselves and they didn't know that the socket released and they bent some of the pins over on it and then that was not a good thing. Okay, so here is the new and the old DLP chip as you see the new one over here. Sometimes you'll pull them out and it'll be a 1910-6103 instead of a 6143. The 6143 is the newer version. So let's go ahead and install that. As before, it's just a matter of dropping it in place rotating the socket to lock it into place. Now pay very particular attention that you have no dust, no specks, no fingerprints on the front of the chip as well as where the chip mates to there's a small mirror in here. Make sure that it is clean. Use some compressed air to clean it out or a lint-free microfiber cloth to remove any dust specks from the face of the DLP chip and the mirror that's inside here. Any specks on the face of the chip or on the mirror will result in little uh, light blobs in the picture. So I'm not going to show you the reassembly, it's just the opposite of disassembly. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this real quick and then we'll get another test pattern on the screen real fast. Just one thing I wanted to mention also uh, about these DLP chips is they are available through Shop Jimmy and uh, I've ordered several of them through them. Never had a problem with one of the DLP chips that I've got that I've received from Shop Jimmy. In addition to them carrying the DLP chips for these sets, uh, also they do offer an extended warranty if uh, you or your customer feels the need that they would rather uh, be guaranteed that they're not going to have a failure for a certain length of time. You can purchase an extended warranty from Shop Jimmy. Okay, so here's the set I'll put back together. Got the new DLP chip in it. And uh, once again, the, the menu items I showed you our menu, two, four, five, seven. And then this will bring up the adjustment menu. Uh, I don't recommend tinkering with these other than the HV position, horizontal vertical position. So once again, press play and then fast forward or rewind to get into the, the uh, service mode. Now on this one, HV position, if you move the cursor up 
it'll actually move the picture up. You can use the bars around the outside of the screen to center the picture in the frame. So as it stands, we've got it centered with white there and just white barely on top. When it's done, press enter. It'll flash red for a second, which means it wrote that into its EEPROM memory. You can step through and do some other adjustments by pressing the audio button and then the video button will actually step you through different modes. Uh, one of the modes that uh, commonly has problems but not on this particular model is the index delay IDL and I think on these it's around 60 if I'm not mistaken. There it is, IDL. The best screen to adjust that on is this one right here. And as you change, if you were to get it off, you can see the easiest way I see is to look right here. You can see some shading differences there, so you want to adjust that until you have virtually no shading difference. Remember, if you don't press enter, it doesn't save it. So if you made a mistake, just simply press the menu button to get back out of it and you won't have any more problems. See, it's going pink there, so we don't want that. So I'm gonna exit this real quick without saving. Now the other menu you can get into is the same way, menu, two, four, seven, zero. That's gonna give you some other options. You can initialize it. It tells you how many hours of use the set has on it, things like that. Uh, initialize just restores all the factory data settings back to it like it was new out of the box when you turn it on for the first time after initializing it will ask you if you want to do things like auto program and set up things like that. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the uh, DLP chip replacement on the Mitsubishi uh, 1080p models. I'll, I'll try to get a whole model list up when I post this video, but uh, there's so many different models that this applies to. Hopefully, once again, you enjoyed my video. You can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. With your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.